Folk Tales of Hawaii, Himau Ka'au Hawaii, collected and translated by Mary Kavena Pukui, with Laura C.S. Green. The Legend of Ni Aue Po'o Hina was the mother of Ni Aue Po'o. Kualakai, the father. Ku came from Kahiki Nui Aaleaalea to Ma Nia Nia in Ka'u and lives with Hina. At length, he said to his wife, I am going back to Kahiki Aaleaalea from whence I came. When our child is born, if he asks for me, give him these tokens by which I may know him. My red helmet? my red feather cape, and my canoe with red sails. Send him to me in this canoe and in this only. Hina's son was born and named Ni Aue Po'o. As he grew up, he noticed that the other boys had fathers, and he asked Hina where his own father might be. Alas, he is dead. Only we two are left, she told him. He persisted in asking, and at length she told him of his father in Kahiki and showed him the tokens. When he refused to go in his father's canoe, she went to consult her parents about the boy's wish to travel to the land of his father. They advised her to call upon their ancestor, Niuola Hiki, to conduct the boy and give him two gifts, an arrow and a bow, to take with him to Kahiki. In the morning at daybreak, Hina called upon her divine ancestor, E Niuola Hiki, I Kupui Kahiki, I mole i kahiki, i kumu i kahiki, i lau i kahiki, i hua i kahiki, i yo'o i kahiki e. Instantly, a coconut sprouted from the ground in front of her door and grew into a tree with two coconuts upon it, in which she recognized her ancestor. Waking her son, she told him to sit among the leaves of the tree and hold on tight and not to fear. The boy took his bow and arrow seated himself among the leaves, and held tight. Higher and higher grew the tree until the leaves looked like a mere dot in the sky. The boy was frightened and called to his mother, Oh Hina, Hina, my hands and feet are numb with fear. Oh new Olahiki, hold your grandchild fast. Then the boy lost his fear through the mana of the divine ancestor. There was now no land in sight. Higher and higher grew the tree, and again, Fear gripped the boy. He called, Oh Hina, Hina, my hands and feet are numb with fear. Hina, anxiously listening, heard the voice of her son faintly and called back, Oh Niuola Hiki, hold fast to your grandchild. Up and up they went. Then, at last, the tree bent over toward Kahiki Aaleaalea. In alarm, the boy cried out, Oh, Hina, Hina, my hands and feet are numb with fear. I am losing my grip and shall fall. Very faintly came the words to Hina's ears, and she called back, Oh, Niuola Hiki, take care of my son. Ever downward bent the tree until its leaves rested on the land of Kahiki Nui Aleaalea. Then, assuming human form, the ancestor said to the boy, Guard well your grandparents' gifts. The arrow will lead you wherever you wish to go. Ni Awe Po walked along the shore until he came upon a group of boys who were playing and shouting. Who are you and where do you come from? They cried. I am Ni Awe Po and I live in this neighborhood, he replied. No, you do not, a few retorted. We live hereabouts ourselves and we have never seen you before. Come and join us in our play, invited others. So Ni Awe Po'o became one of the merry, shouting boys. Someone proposed a contest of skill, and they fell to work to make a large mound of sand to mark a course for surfing. They paddled out on their boards to meet the surf and turned shoreward, each trying to keep in line with the mound they had built. Those who kept in line surfed again and again. Those who missed went ashore to watch the others. The game continued until Ni Awe Po'o alone was left the victor. So it was with every game proposed, boxing, spear throwing, foot races, ulumaika, Ni Awe Po'o excelled in all.
One of the boys in the group named Uhuula admired his skill and asked Ni Awe Po'o to become his friend, and the two boys strolled away together. Ni Awe Po'o now remembered his arrow and he sent it flying along with the words, Cry, ne, over the bald head, ne, over the drooping lidded, ne, over the one eyed, ne, over the hunchback, and lead me to the place where I belong. The arrow sped on, whistling over the bald head, the drooping lidded, the one eyed, and flying over the head of a hunchbacked woman who stood outside of a large grass house. It entered the door of the house, where a young girl caught it quickly, rolled it in a piece of fine copper, and held it firmly in her hand. She looked up as the shadow of the two boys in the doorway fell across the mats. Have you seen my arrow? No, I have not seen it. I saw it come in here. Perhaps you are mistaken. There is no arrow here. Let me call it, and it will answer. Call it, then. So Ni Awe Po'o called. O arrow of my grandfather, where are you? Here! answered the arrow. Come to me. The arrow moved to obey, but the girl held on tight, hoping that the boys would enter the house after the arrow, and finally she invited them to do so. As soon as they were inside, the hunchback, at a sign from her mistress, closed the door, and the girl took Ni Awe Po'o for her husband. Now the girl was the daughter of Kuala Kai by another wife, one who lived here in Kahikiku, and the chief had promised himself that when his son came from Hawaii, this girl was to become his son's wife, and he had set two old men to watch at the beach for the coming of the canoe with the red sail. When he heard that the girl had already taken a husband, he was very angry, and proceeding to the house of the girl and addressing Ni Awe Po'o, he asked, Who are you? I am Ni Awe Po'o, son of Hina and Kuala Kai. If you are indeed Ni Awe Po'o, where are my red helmet, the red feather cape for your shoulders, the canoe with the red sail, and my sacred canoe, those I left with my mother in Hawaii? You are an imposter and shall die, both you and your friend here. The two boys were seized and bound, and when the emu was prepared, they were killed and baked therein. That night, a great rainstorm swept over the land, washing away leaves, stones, charcoal, bodies, and all, washing them out of the emu into the sea. There, Niuola Hiki, in his eel form, took charge of the bodies of the boys and carried them to the gods of the sea where they came to life again. Ni Awe Po'o in human form and Uhuula in the form of a red fish. Three nights later, the two guards watching at the shore for Ni Awe Po'o to arrive by canoe saw a handsome youth rise out of the sea and come to the shore. Observing a fine paved walk leading to a well-built house by the shore, he called, O kahiki loa, o kahiki poko, for whom was this walk made? And they both answered, For ni awe poo. First they kill ni awe poo, and then they say that the walk is made for him? And stepping boldly upon the walk, he went toward them. Seeing the bathing pool beside the house, he said, O kahiki loa, o kahiki poko, whose bathing pool is this? It is for Ni Awe Po'o. They have killed Ni Awe Po'o, and yet they say that this is his bathing pool? Plunging into the water, the youth bathed in the pool. Pointing then to a loincloth suspended from the overhanging bough of a tree, he said, O Kahikiloa, O Kahikipoko, whose loincloth is this? It is for Ni Awe Po'o. They have killed Ni Awe Po'o, and yet they say that this is his loincloth? And he wound the cloth about his loins. At the door of the house, he paused and said, O Kahikiloa, O Kahikipoko, whose water gourd is this? It is for Ni Awe Po'o. They have killed Ni Awe Po'o, and yet they say that this is his water gourd? And he drank from the gourd. O Kahikiloa, O Kahikipoko, Whose drum is this? It is for Ni Awe Po'o. 
They have killed Niawe Po'o, and yet they say the drum is for Niawe Po'o? And he sat down and continued drumming upon it until it grew late. O kahiki loa, o kahiki poko, whose sleeping mats are these? They are for Ni Awe Po'o. They have killed Ni Awe Po'o, and yet they say that these mats are for Ni Awe Po'o? And he lay down on the mats. O kahiki loa, o kahiki poko, whose sleeping kappa are these? They are for Ni Awe Po'o. They have killed Ni Awe Po'o, and yet they say that these kappa are for him? And he drew the kappa over himself. Wake me early, O Kahikiloa and Kahikipoko, that I may depart before the sun is warm. In the morning, they awakened him early, and he went away into the sea. For four nights, the father of Ni Awe Po'o heard the sound of his son's drum and was uneasy. He called the watchkeepers and heard the story from them. Then he summoned two prophets and asked them to see what being it was who came up each night out of the sea and beat upon his son's drum, drank from his son's gourd, slept upon his son's sleeping mats, and covered himself with his son's sleeping kapo. The prophets prayed and declared to him that it was no other than his own son who had come on the back of his ancestor, Niuolahiki, to seek his father. In order first to appease the ancestor, he must prepare gifts of a pure black pig, a fathom in length, black of a drink, a red and a white fish, and take them to the sea and call upon Niuolahiki. If he was willing to forgive the chief, he would arise in his eel body and eat the offering. Then he would not fight against him when the chief endeavored to catch his son. Next, instruct the prophets, when his son had come up into the house, he should take ten long nets and surround the house and then offer to him exactly the same food which had been given to his ancestor, without varying it a bit. If he varied it, there would be trouble. The chief sent men to carry out the prophet's charge. The ancestor rose from the sea and ate the offering. At night, the nets were laid and the chief and his men hid in the sand before the youth appeared. After the sun was set, the boy came up out of the sea, and as his feet touched the land, he called, O kahikiloa, o kahikipoko, I see eyes, bright eyes, staring at me out of the sand. Those are crabs, just sand crabs. Only we two are here. O kahikiloa, o kahikipoko, whose paved walk is this? It is for Ni Awe Po'o. First they kill Ni Awe Po'o, and now they say it is for Ni Awe Po'o? The father listened and heard the questions and answers repeated for the bathing pool, the loincloth, the water guard, the drum, the sleeping mats, and the sleeping kapa. The two old men then questioned the youth, and he told them all he knew about his parentage, his journey to Kahiki, and what had happened since his coming. In the meantime, the chief drew near and listened to the story and knew that this was indeed his son, Ni Awe Po'o. The sun was high the next day before the men awakened Ni Awe Po'o. The youth dashed out of the house and found himself caught in a net. He tore through it and felt another net about him. As he neared the last net, they brought the girl whom Ni Awe Po'o had made his wife and placed her within it. She held him with her arms until the men had succeeded in covering both with the net and taking them into the house, where the food was laid before Ni Awe Po'o with prayer. He ate and became as he was before he was killed. All desire to fling himself into the sea left him, and on the sixth day, he and his half-sister went away to her home to live together. The chief, however, had observed that the red fish had by some mistake been omitted in the offering and knew that trouble was in store for him. In the meantime, in Ka'u, Hina knew that evil had befallen her son, and in answer to her prayer, her shark guardian appeared and carried her over the sea to Kahiki Ale'ale'a. There she fought her son's father for killing her son and threw him into the sea, where the gods of the sea in pity turn him into the first Kualakai fish. Hina then returned to Ka'u and married again, and her first child 
a daughter she named Ma Nia Nia, Nam, in memory of her brother's sensations when he went over the sea with his ancestor, Niuola Hiki. The place where Hina lived in Kau District is still called Ma Nia Nia, after the daughter who was born to her there. <laughs>